Welcome to the 2013 Ashland University Preview Show. I'm your host, Elizabeth Buhite, a journalism and digital media major here at Ashland University. For the next 30 minutes, we will review a very successful 2012 season and look ahead to a very promising 2013 campaign. The Eagles are coming off of one of their most successful seasons ever. They won 11 regular season games and for the first time in school history, were crowned GLIAC football champions. This perfect season led to a national ranking and a berth into the NCAA Division II playoffs. It was their third playoff appearance in six years, and Ashland ended the season ranked fourth in the country. As a result, head coach Lee Owens, now entering his 10th season, was named the 2012 GLIAC Coach of the Year. Coach Owens sat down with us to reflect on the success of last season. Well, it's an honor to be the conference coach of the year, but it's a real credit to our entire team. I mean, without our play on offense and defense, uh, without uh, the coaching staff working hard every week to get ready for the next opponent, uh, it's really an honor for our entire team and for our entire staff. And, and you know, again, I really uh, I feel fortunate to, to be a part of it. You know, we, we played every game, one game at a time. We try to get better every week. Uh, you know, anytime you go through the regular season undefeated, particularly in the GLIAC, it's an unbelievable accomplishment. Although, that wasn't something we focused on. We never talked about that. It was never even brought up until we won our 11th game and they handed us the conference trophy. We just worried about who the next opponent was. We didn't worry about who we'd beaten the week before. We didn't have to worry about who we were playing in two weeks. We just, who's this next opponent that we have to play this week? And that approach was really successful for us last year. The 2012 season was full of memorable records and accomplishments. When we come back, we'll take a look at the 2013 squad to see if they have what it takes to repeat as GLIAC champions and make another run at the NCAA Division II playoffs. Newspaper reporters all over the country are being asked to produce multimedia content online uh, to accompany their stories that appear in the newspaper. And so we really want to stress that uh, you can't focus solely on print anymore. If you want to get a job when you get out of college as a journalism major, you have to be able to prove that you can report and edit for any, any of the mediums. Like every college football team, the Ashland Eagles lost some key players to graduation. Most notably, senior quarterback Taylor Housewright. He was a three-year starter for Ashland, who threw for 3,072 yards and 32 TDs in 2012 with only four interceptions. Coach Owen says he will not name a new starting quarterback until the dust settles after camp at the end of August. Returning in the backfield for the 2013 season are juniors Anthony Taylor and Jordan McCune. Taylor ran for 1,198 yards last season with 13 rushing touchdowns. McCune also ran for 13 TDs and 928 yards, giving Ashland a one-two punch with both speed and power running, or as the team calls them, thunder and lightning. We talked with associate head coach Doug Geyser to see if they will go to the running game as their offensive weapon of choice for this upcoming season. 2013 offense, uh, we're pretty excited in the fact that we have uh, other than our, our uh, quarterback from last year, who's a tremendous player, Taylor House Wright, and Anthony Capasso, we, we've got everybody else back in the TV. So experience-wise, we feel really good about that group, a group that produced at a very high level last year, almost 40 points a game. So we're very, very excited, and we're really looking forward to who's going to step up and become that quarterback and be our leader. For us, we're, we're, we're going to do what we do. We're going to do what we do ever since going back to the Akron years back in, uh, back in the 90s. We're going to be very, very balanced. We're going to show you two backs, we're going to show you one back. We're going to show you spread. We're going to show you very condensed. Um, we're going to be physical, whether it's in the run game or the pass game, and uh, basically get the ball to our playmakers in space. That's kind of what we believe in, what we've hung our hat on. As far as guys we're really looking forward to, kind of set the tempo, um, we think we have the two best tailbacks in the league. Anthony Taylor and uh, Jordan McCune have been very, very productive for us going into their, their uh, junior year here. They should be kind of the uh, guys we can hang our hat on early as that quarterback you know, gains the experience for himself. 
Uh, Receiver-wise, you're looking at Eric Thompson. Eric Thompson has played a lot of football for us as a freshman and sophomore. Stretches the defense for us, and you can just see a, a great jump in his play this past year. And then also, one of our leaders on offense right now has been David Susie. David Susie will be a senior for us, and has just been, has been our voice throughout the summer. On the offensive line, I got my top, my top eight guys back, so I'm very, very excited with that. We have 110 starts coming back as a group. And uh, usually they say if you have over 60 as a group combined, yeah, it's, that pretends to good things. Um, our leader I mean, coming back is Zach Vermillion. He's a four-year starter for us, uh, preseason All-American. was an All-GLIAC player last year. Um, and he's just, you know, just coming back to us after missing the spring. We're expecting great things from him. And James Triplett right next to him. My left side is very, 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 very good. And uh, they need to play at that level and play at an all-conference or higher level. Um, other than that, we have, we have Keith Dingler coming back as a three-year starter at center. He's played a lot of snaps for us and understands the game. John Seppa brings a fire to the group at right guard. And Belial Knight is extremely athletic at right tackle. Jordan McCune is a battering ram. Uh, what if we want to call him a rolling ball of butcher knives. He uh, is a very, very physical runner. Um, I've noticed a, a, a jump in his play during camp already. I think his feet have gotten even quicker. People don't realize how, how agile he is and how quick he is on his feet. He, they've gotten quicker. As he, I think as the story started to understand the game, he's played a lot of football now, understands how plays are going to hit. He will punish you if you try to attack him in the open space. And we feel if we can get him to the point of attack with one unblocked guy, we're probably going to win that battle. I think it'll probably be balanced, you know, uh, you know, 50-50. But, um, you know, if we get in the clutch situation, I feel like, you know, we'd have to, you might, might move to the run game a little more this year, uh, depending on, you know, our quarterback situation. But as of right now, you know, we're sticking with the 50-50 balance. And, uh, you know, if we can be balanced, we're going to win ball games. You know, being, me and Anthony being here three years, three year starters, you know, we definitely got their trust and their confidence uh, for us to run the ball. So I feel like, you know, if it comes to clutch situations, they won't hesitate to, you know, give us the ball. You know, obviously it'd be nice to go at 10-0 again. Um, beat Indy, we're going to, you know, focus on Indy the first round. Um, my personal goal is, you know, you know, step it up from last year, you know, help the team out, whatever they need. Um, you know, got a lot of uh, team, uh, team goals more than individual goals, so you know, you just focus on a team and you know, that's, that's the main objective. Personally, I feel like we're going to be a little more of a run team organization uh, this year, just for the fact, you know, we got a lot of young quarterbacks coming in. Not, I mean, we got TK Rock that, you know, is experienced, that knows the playbook and stuff, but you know, there's, there's a hefty battle right now going on between the between you know the young guys and the older guys, so you know they know they feel comfortable with the run game right now. You know, like I said, me and Anthony's three-year starters, so you know they got a lot of trust. We've earned earned, earned their trust. So you know we're just gonna have to see how it pans out. Anthony Taylor's smooth slasher. It's kind of a uh, you know thunder and lightning type of deal on the back in the backfield with Jordan being the thunder. Anthony's the lightning. He'll take it to the house if you give him a crease. And uh, he, he just he just started to raise his his play to another level. Um, he's, you know, right now, like I said, if you give him a crease, he is going to take it to the house. He's starting to become more physical now, being 209 pounds. He's starting to finish the runs like Jordan is, too. I think he's starting to learn from him. Uh, we came in the same time, uh, you know, we struggled learning the playbook at uh, the same time. We were trying to help each other out, but now we've got it down packed and, you know, one, two punch, thunder and lightning. Yeah, I feel we can uh, do the play it. We're just trying to get better from last season. Especially we had everybody returning on the line also, so definitely can duplicate it. Just uh, learning my reads and stuff, you know, looking at back at old film from last year, just trying to learn what I did wrong and what I missed and just trying to correct that. But we still be a balanced team, so I feel like pass is just as important as the run game. Just trying to stay the same mindset. Just try to I guess more touchdowns and more yards, same goes, feed Indy. We're still, we still in sync, uh, we still got that chemistry, you know, just trying to uh, find a quarterback, but other than that, everybody's returning, so, you know, we're pretty good. Jordan uh, Jordan. Uh, One minute! Jordan has a funny side, a little, uh, you know, hidden humor that most people might not see, but I see a lot. We spend a lot of time together, so, you know, more than people think, you know, we got closer. Definitely with that name. <laughs> Anthony, oh man. He's uh he was uh definitely a quiet guy coming in as a freshman. You know, 
coming clear from Virginia, not knowing what to expect. I, I'm from a little valley 20 minutes away from here, so I knew some people on the team, but Anthony came in really quiet, and you can't get him to be quiet now. So, I mean, he's a jokester. You know, he's a great guy. He definitely has uh, a jokester side, like I said. Like, he will come off to people very shy, but, he, but when he gets around his friends and stuff, and the people that, you know, didn't know him, would think that he's just shy all the time, but no, nah, in all reality, we can't get him to be quiet anymore. There are many key offensive players returning for the Eagles this season, including the entire offensive line from the 2012 squad. This team not only has depth at running back, but at all of the skilled positions on offense. When we come back, we'll take a look at the other side of the ball when we sit down with defensive line coach Reggie Gamble and preseason All-Americans Cody Bloom and Jamie Meter when the 2013 Ashland University football preview show continues. In the Department of Journalism and Digital Media, we place a lot of value on internships. All of our majors are required to do an internship in order to graduate. We think they're extremely important for a number of reasons. They help students make contacts with people who are already in the industry. They give students a really good idea of what the industry is like. Um, and it's really an invaluable experience that we think every student should have. It is said that defense wins championships. If that's the case, the Eagles look good to repeat as GLIAC champions in 2013. But before we hand out the trophy, let's sit down with defensive line coach Reggie Gamble to see what he has to say about the nationally ranked defense from 2012 and what they need to do to stop the high-powered offenses in the GLIAC. This year's defense, we have a lot of guys coming back. You know, we're really excited. We got some depth, um, some, some positions, and you know, we're looking at some depth for other positions, you know. Um, we have a lot of seniors up front, Jamie Meter. Uh, he's going to be accompanied by two new starters, guys who played last year though. So what we're trying to do, we're bringing freshmen in and they're playing right away. At our level, we don't have the luxury of Ohio State and redshirting everybody. You know, and so now our, our freshmen are coming in and playing. So they're second year guys, they're battle tested and they're ready. And in the back end, you know, we got some guys coming in. We brought in some freshmen, some talented freshmen, and we have some talented returners coming back in. Eric Schwederman, Quentin Scott, and those guys. So we feel really confident that, you know, with the good camp that we hope we're having right now, that our guys will be solid come game time. We're an aggressive defense. You know, we're multiple. We want to make sure we give the offense a lot to think about. And that's really, Coach Jones will tell you, that's what, that's what we hang our hat on, being multiple and fast. We're speed defense. You know, we're not maybe the biggest defense in the league, but we hang our hat on being one of the fastest. Um, some of the key starters, Jamie Meter, of course, uh, Cody Bloom, Chris Harvey, and Damian Combs. Phil Glass is another senior linebacker. Then in the back end, we got Quentin Scott and Eric Sweetman. Those two guys we're really counting on to lead the group. They're really athletic right now. Um, we have some guys coming, Terion Saunders. Uh, he got playing time last year. Everybody that's, starting, that's going to play this year got some playing time last year. Um, so after Jamie, there's you know Matt Bambauer, Ed Cleveland, Terion Saunders, Tim Lair, and then there's a couple of freshmen that are vying. You know, we're trying to see if they can get into the mix. You know, that's what we want. We love for them to get in the mix. Today. These guys need to be ready to go next year once the Jamie the meters of the world are gone. Jamie, he's grown into a leader. It wasn't something that came natural to him, but he's gotten better and he, he's really taken ownership of the D-line. And he's stepped up and been one of our predominant leaders on the offense in general. Um, he's got such a dominant player just because he has such an unmatched combination of speed, power, and size. I mean, you look at the guy and you know, he, 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 James is a guy who could have played at the Division One level. And, by the Lord's blessing, he ended up at Ashland University. So we're happy to have him, and we got one more season with him, and so we're going to go as far as we can with him. I mean, he doesn't, he's not the big bear that he looks like off the field. He's, he's actually a great guy, easy to get along with. He likes to joke around, but he's, he's a different person when he's on that field. He's, you can definitely see it. Uh, his work ethic in the weight room. I mean, and he watches film like no other, and he's just, he's got a great work ethic in the weight room and in the offseason, and he puts in the time that's required. Of him. But I mean, the plan is just to win. But I mean, they score less, we win. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, just lead by example. I'm not the most vocal person, but I mean, I just want to get the job done and do my part of the, for the win. I mean, it's an honor to have that. But I mean, no, I'm not thinking about that. I'm just letting things uh, happen how it happens and just taking one game at a time. 
I mean, we got a young quarterback, but still a ton of experience coming back. Both tailbacks, our whole line. I mean, he's our quarterback's going to be a scholarship player too. I mean, I know we lost Taylor, but we're still going to have a good player coming. I think we're going to be good. We got solid players back. We're tough, and we're just going to fly around and make plays. Strength, speed, attitude, and just uh, the eagerness to win. Stop the run, stop the pass, we'll win the game. Cody's a great leader. He's a tough nerd guy. He's an every down linebacker. He just, he wants to win and he works at it. He's one of the hardest workers on the team. And that's really what we get out of him every day. He works, he comes in, practice, meeting rooms. He's always ready to work, trying to learn. Go, 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 that's the best thing about our group of kids right now. Everybody wants to get better. There's no sense of complacency. Um, everybody's focused on Indy this year. And that's been the focus since our last season ended. He's a big guy, strong too, meathead, but <laughs> gets the job done. He's a great football player. I would say to play up to our potential. I, I mean, we should be really fast as a defense, and I hope that we fly around and have 10 guys, if not 11, to the ball every time. I mean, if I'm in the position to make those tackles and the defense is playing like they played last year, then there's no reason why I shouldn't, but it all depends on how we're doing as a defense as a whole. I wouldn't say the titles help me lead the defense at all. I would say what goes on in the off season and what goes on in practice helps me or makes me a better leader. I wouldn't say that these titles give me any right to be a leader. I wouldn't say it adds any pressure. I mean it's a great honor but once you're on the field and once you're out there against another opponent it doesn't matter what you've gotten in the off season. I mean I haven't earned those. What what depend what are I mean what gave me those was last year's last year's play. That doesn't mean anything towards this year or the opponents we're playing this year, so I mean it doesn't, I wouldn't say it adds any pressure. Personal goals, I don't, win games, I don't know, that's what, that's what it all comes down to. But every other position besides quarterback, we have experienced players, so I mean, if we can get a quarterback to step up, whether it be a young guy or an older guy who's been here and through the program, that'd be great. Somebody that would learn the deep, or learn the offense real well and put in the time in the film room and all that would, I mean, I'd love to see that as a quarterback coming up. And then. Uh, as a defense, like I said, I'm hoping we're going to be we're going to be a real fast defense, and we've also got some great D linemen, Jamie Meter and uh, Matt Bambauer stepping up. So I'm hoping that we can be real strong up front and real fast in the back. We have a great team chemistry. I think that's what it adds up to being around these players for my whole career and just playing together so much that we we have a feel for each other. We trust each other, and I mean we know that they're going to have our back, and that's what it all comes down to: is great team chemistry. And if we play like we should and everyone puts in the work in the film room and on the practice field and nobody gets complacent with, with last year's success, that has nothing to do with this year. I mean, we have to look forward and take one week at a time and can't get ahead of ourselves. I think this is one of the best off seasons we've had as a, having our upfront defensive guys there, like the ones and twos. I think this is one of the best offenses, our off seasons we've had with uh, off season uh, participation in the off season, like over the summer and stuff with workouts. Oh, Bloom? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, he's a very good dancer. <laughs> Did he really say that? Yeah. <laughs> After all of the success last season, the excitement and expectations are running high on the Ashland University campus. With many returning lettermen and experienced players suiting up for the Eagles this fall, there's only one question left. Who will be the starting quarterback for the Eagles September 7th in Indianapolis? We sit down with head coach Lee Owens to get some insight when we come back. I really enjoyed working camera for the football games. It was just a good group of people. It was like more or less the same group every week, so every week we got to know each other. And especially being a freshman, getting to know people out of class right away like that really solidified me like let me know that I made the right choice coming here. And just being able to look back and say, wow, I did that, I did that at Ashland. There have been some very talented quarterbacks throughout the long storied history of the AU Eagles. Most recently, Billy Cundiff and Taylor Housewright have graced the school record books during their tenure at AU. Now the quarterback sweepstakes is wide open to a number of underclassmen who had great high school careers. Who will be the next starting quarterback? Only one man can answer that question, head coach Lee Owens. Boy, I bet you the Indianapolis defensive staff would want to know that answer too. Uh, 
but I'm not sure right now. I mean, we've got some great candidates. Uh, we've got some players who've been here competing for a couple years. Uh, we have a, a player, Cole Hudson, has come back from baseball to compete. And, and we have three true freshmen that are competing. And so I know we have some really great candidates and it's gonna sort itself out really quick. And, but the important thing here is that we've got an offensive football team that's really experienced. And so the guy we put behind center doesn't have to win games for us. You know, he just has to rally those other 10 starters to play like they did a year ago. Well, you know, we've had some exciting games in, in, in uh, Jack Miller Stadium, uh, Fred Martinelli Field. It's, it's been fun. I mean, we've played triple overtimes and four overtimes and, you know, one on the last play. We beat Wayne State seven to nothing. We, we scored 60 against another team, you know. So I think the one thing for sure, when you, when you show up here to watch a game, it's, uh, you're real close and, and to the action. Uh, our guys are going to play really hard. The GLEAC's always going to have a good opponent for us to play, and, and, and it's going to be 60 minutes of, of electric football. And so I think the fans have got accustomed to that, and it's not going to be any different this year. You know, I think as, 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 a, as a fan base, our, 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 our Eagle fans have got used to hard-hitting defense and exciting, unpredictable offense. And I don't think that's going to be any different. Well, even with special teams, I mean, a year ago we had some punt formations that were crazy and blocked punts and scored. And so uh, we're always trying to do the unpredictable. We're trying to, to go for it on fourth down when they think we're going to punt and throw it when they think we're going to run and run when they think we're going to throw it and blitz when they think we're going to play safe. So we're going to continue to try to keep the opponent on their toes. And, and I think that keeps the fans interested. Coach Owen seems to be as anxious as the rest of us here at Ashland University for the 2013 season. Be sure to stop by Fred Martinelli Field to cheer on your purple and gold this fall. The first two games are on the road with Indianapolis on September 7th and Wayne State on September 14th. The Eagles come home to face the Bulldogs of Ferris State on September 21st and Northern Michigan on the 28th. The Eagles hit the road again to battle Lake Erie College on October 5th and come back home to take on the Panthers of Ohio Dominican on the 12th. AU will take on Walsh University at Fawcett Stadium in Canton on October 19th before hosting Malone University on the 26th. They head west to face the Finley Oilers on November 2nd and wrap up the season at home against the Tiffin Dragons on November 9th. If you can't make a game in person this season, remember you can catch every home game on Mansfield's own WMFD and Ashland University's student-run radio station 88.9 WRDL-FM. This season, Ashland University's Journalism and Digital Media Department are also streaming every home game on the web. Check www.ashland.edu for viewing information. You can also catch the replay of every home game on Armstrong's AU TV 20 throughout the week. That wraps it up for the 2013 Ashland University Football Preview Show. We would like to thank the Athletic Department of Ashland University for their help in the production of this show. Athletic Director Bill Goldring, Sports Information Director Al King, Director of Sports Marketing Rachel Bixler, and Assistant Sports Information Director Rachel O'Connor. I'm Journalism and Digital Media Major Elizabeth Buhight, and I hope to see you at Jack Miller Stadium this fall for what we think will be a season to remember. Thanks for watching. The Eagles are coming off of one of their most successful seasons ever. They had 11. Mm -hmm. It was their sixth, no, I lost it, was named the 2012 was full of many memorable accomplishments and records. Nope, that's wrong already. But the 2013 squad to see if they are ready to, I got it, I got it, I got it. We sat down with head coach, no, he's not the head coach. When we come back, we talk, not only do the Eagles have depth at running back, but they also, no, shoot, 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 shoot. And preseason All-Americans, Cody Bloom and Janie. No, oh, no! Repeat as the 2000, hair in my face, Reggie Gamble, to see what he has to say about the. And expectations and excitement is running high on the Ashland University campus. There's only one question. Who will the starting quarterback be come? I couldn't handle it. I couldn't do it. 
With all of the returning lottermen and skilled players returning this fall, I can't do it. The excitement and expect Pearl, I can't get it. Okay. After all of last season's success, the mother of Pearl, with many returning lettermen and skilled players, after last season's success, there are many, oh my God, with many people returning this year, no, with many returning lettermen and experienced platers, platers. Now, the starting quarterback position is up for grabs. Mmm, so close. Billy Cundiff and Taylor Housewright have graced the record books with their talents. Ugh. Billy Cundiff and Taylor Housewright have graced the... Now, the quarterback sweepstakes is up for grabs through many... Mm-hmm. Billy Cundiff and Taylor Housewright graced the school record books with their accomplishments and during their who had great high school careers. Who will break through? Now, the quarterback position is wide open. They're like, oh, I can't, I can't, I need to like, I need to stop. Most recently, Billy Cundiff and Taylor Housewright graced the school record books with their, why are you shaking your head? Coach Owens seems to be as anxious as the rest of us for the th mother of Pearl I mean. Coach Owens seems to be as anxious as the rest of us for this upcoming season and uh, keep forgetting to say Ashland University. 2013 Ashland University Preview Football Show. 2013 Ashland University Football. I'm journalism and digital media major Elizabeth Buhite. I messed up my major, didn't I? <laughs> I'm journalism and digital media major Elizabeth Buhite. Yeah. And, and they hope. Ashland University football preview show continues. Okay, it was rough, but yeah, I got through it. The thing that makes this department unique is undoubtedly the amount that students are able to get involved in from day one. Um, I was here for a week and I was part of my first remote high school basketball shoot that Saturday. So I wasn't even here, you know, for a semester to kind of get my feet wet right away. I was able to, to jump in and really learn the things that I wanted to learn and the things that I want to use in the field someday.